Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're gonna have a little bit of fun. It is Sunday service uh, for us, so if anybody's not familiar since we've started the channel uh, and I've moved into this shop a number of years ago, I started what is called Sunday service, and basically it's not a take on anything against religion, it is just something uh, fun that I say car guys can come over, because people always ask when they come over and hang out, and Sunday we could come, worship old cars and hot rods and have fun. Uh, as the years have progressed, it's turned into a really fun thing in the spring, summer, and especially in the fall. Uh, I get a lot of visitors on a Sunday. You never know who's gonna show up. And I always have a couple of friends that come from uh, neighboring states to come and hang out for the day and help and, and just enjoy old cars and uh, like-minded people. So today, I have a bunch of friends coming over and stopping over throughout the day. So I thought I'd have some extra help uh, and extra hands that I could do something fun. And that is my new 34. Well, we've been discussing this. Some people say 33. I think it's actually a really early 34. It has a couple little features that tell me that, um, but we'll leave that for another video. Um, but what I wanna do is do our engine swap or engine, uh, fit up an engine. So my favorite thing to do with these old cars when you first get a project is just to play big kid Legos and take your stash of parts. Uh, for me, I am on expert level for hoarding old parts. And uh, I'm gonna go through, we talked about at the end of the video what engine to put in that. So we're gonna work on mocking up an engine and transmission and, uh, and let you guys see what I kind of have in mind for this car. I'm not gonna start on the car quite yet, but this is gonna be really fun and uh, we'll just make the car look even cooler sitting in my garage. So uh, let's get started. Tell me when I'm centered. I can pull easily. I'm centered. Right there? Well, I mean, I'm in the center of the Well, you just look at it and I'll pull on it. I would come a little bit more. I'd stop. Right there? Yeah. Well, I don't think I'll just flip. Just keep your foot in front of it so it doesn't and shoot out. chain to it and then we'll get a chain and lift it up. Alright. That's good. Just do its thing. Alright. Pull the trans on. Let's 
Let's get this shit up. Where's that dowel at? There. Come on, there we go. Find some rubber mounts to sit down on. I'm probably going to cut that. And, uh, that's good for now. I want to uh, maybe bolt the the ball on there. Yeah. I don't know if that's stupid or not. Wait a second. So we need this little shaft. Need the U joint and a little ball, because then it'll locate in there, and we can actually kind of sit it down like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And then we could also bring the front of the torque tube up to catch it just till we get there. Yeah, right I think in. we're just too much to not even close to landing on that trans mount there. Oh, oh yeah, those are V860 wheels I found in my stash of stuff. And yeah, that's hard to take. So if you can go back with the I'm stuck on the firewall. Oh, all right. Yeah. You need to go down more. Put the belly house in there. There. You got clear. Right, so try and get some in a little bit. Right there. Hold on. Don't push in here. Studs bent. I can't see if it's bent. Come on. Can you figure which one? Yeah, I think I can see the one I'm just trying to put the head back up. See if I think brass, it's this one. Big brass hammer, give it a little bump. Looked like it was that one. Jay, do you want to eyeball that? Oh yeah, it's clear as day. That one's crooked. Yeah. Pull. 
Hey, you need more exercise. Yeah, I mean. So this one, right? Yeah, let me just get the PB or the liquid. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Uh, that literally is how easy it came out. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, just the threat of the monkey pits was enough to scare. <laughs> I like PB Blaster, but liquid wrench is still good. I usually use Croil, but we're used yeah, to that now. I have to bring you a can of Gibbs. Oh yeah, Gibbs is good stuff too. It's good stuff. I just get Croil for... I buy it by the case. Oh, nice. I get Croil by the case, but it's... Uh... So you, you tell us if you mess with old shit? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see that spin. Stuff works. You guys are trying to jinx me. Oh, I'm trying to keep it going for you. Oh! oh. <laughs> see, if we were getting this ready to rebuild, you would want to get them out. Yeah. When I pulled the heads off that old NASCAR motor, uh -huh. I broke uh, nine head bolts off on one side and four on the other. Soon I'm just going to take every all but and like I two out. I <laughs> chop the aluminum heads off. Wow. They couldn't, they couldn't, you know, there's no way I could get them off, so I split them. Try number 36. Took them off. And once you make the first cut, it don't matter. No, anymore. it doesn't matter after that. Well, first cut's the deepest. Yeah, exactly. Well, I got the heads off and I got my little stud puller out and I heated each one with the propane torch. Got on with a ratchet. Mm. So probably, probably that one, right? One. Wow. Well, you know, Robert, once you, if you dead blow it on, how do you get it off? Yeah, right. that's about, you know what? That's enough. It's not going all the way down because it's hitting on a valve. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you gotta take the valves out. You gotta take the valves out. And block them off. So yep. it's to, that's the same on the other side. Yeah, it's sitting. That's what it is. So it's, it won't go any further, which is fine for a fun mock up. Which is cool is you see the, I don't know if it's the place that they bought them from. It's kind of ground. It's something Motive California. Oh, yeah. I don't know who the company rings a bell Let's or see what the other. The other side has something it is it's scratched same, it's off. It's the same thing, yeah. Oh yeah, the cover. Yeah, on, don't worry well, about we can pull it out, but it's the same. Yeah. It's the same way. It's scratched right at the front. Hmm. I don't know if that's who they bought it from, maybe. But you can see the numbers here. I don't think we showed it in the video when I got these, but they're number two thirty-five, and the other side's two thirty-four, right, Jay? So yeah, two thirty-four. And then here's the flip it around. Here's the stamp there. Kind of ground off, so I'm wondering if that was one of the distributors. Looks better than on the shelf. That's what I figured. If I'm going to let it sit sit around and look cool, might as well bolt it on a car. It's going to go on. I got to call that guy about those brass. Yeah. Nuts, you you tagged me in there. Years ago at Hershey, I think I told you about that. Years ago at Hershey, a guy used to set hard and edge with rope. Around his tent to keep his tent from blowing away. Ooh! I'm so heavy, I should have had somebody helping me. Dumbass. All you have to do is holler. I know. No, no, let's see. I never said I was smart. <laughs> now, you need, for, to put a blower on the Arden for real, you need an intake that yes. made for that. Yep. All right, so. Great Sunday service of mocking up all of my dream parts uh, on pretty much my dream hot rod. So we grabbed the car, you guys remembered in the last video, and you know like the first couple things we always do is usually go through a car and clean it out. There's nothing to clean out in this there's car. There's no floors to hold there's, there, there's nothing to clean out in this car. So my plan to uh, get rid of all the, uh, all the discussion about what to put on the car, it was kind of a Kind of a no-brainer, obviously. We knew what you were going to do. I already knew what I was going to do, but I want to see what you guys said. But a lot of a lot of requests for Hemi, for the blown Hemi, which was, was not a surprise, but sort of a surprise. But obviously we went the with... The Stude. There was a lot of oh, yeah, comments about of, the Stude. I was very surprised. There was a lot of people there that were saying that they liked the Studebaker engine, probably because it was different, and that's kind of why it's sitting around. But for this car, being like my dream hot rod setup, We'll put the dream engine stuff in it. So I had this spare block laying around that I may use to build up for 
this engine. It's an old race engine that uh, has been used and abused and needs to be punched back out. I think a cylinder needs to be sleeved, but it has all the hard work done, like big valves, ported and relieved, four inch crank, I think it's three and three eighths if I remember correctly. It's got, it's got the works done to it, it's just that it's an old race engine and it needs to be gone back through because it's sat and it was kind of blown up at one point. So uh, we dropped that in there just for fun. Obviously slid the heads on, we had to take a bunch of those head studs out that were like tweaked from just the engine getting moved around. Luckily, like, I don't know how many, head, we took like five, six, seven, five, six head, head studs out and all of them came out without breaking with just a little bit of penetrating oil, so that was really great. So, the whole setup, um, obviously we got the Ardens on, we got the big a towel blower on here, um, which is awesome. I need a plate that mounts on here. I have a standard flathead intake that came with this blower on there. Obviously that won't work with the Arden setup, so I need to get a, a Scott um, intake manifold for Arden heads. I believe H&H &H might sell that or have it available. If not, I'm going to have to sell a kidney to find an original one, which uh, I'm not against. Um, so yeah, so we got this all mocked up. Now I can kind of just start tinkering around on it. I'm not gonna get real heavy on building this car, just kind of gathering parts and getting things kind of mocked up. So now that we kind of have the grill sitting here roughly where it was, you know, I thought it should be, you can see the blower sticks out pretty good. So if that's where it's gonna sit, we're gonna to need to move the grill out a little bit more. Obviously the car's channeled, so we kind of need to drop the, the grill to get it in line. I can't drop the car a lot more height-wise because it's already pretty darn low. It's like five inches. Yeah, so it's, I mean, that's safe. I mean, if we go to City Coop, probably the bottom of the grill's about that far too. So I'm not too worried about that, but we can't go like, two or three more inches because it's going to be like dragging, but I really kind of like running a 34 grill on this. All my other junk has, aside from the 34, has 32 grills on it, so it'd be nice to actually have a 34 grill on it. So um, we're going to stick with that. One big problem, obviously, this really trick steering box mount that they did is going to be a problem because the exhaust is literally is, over is, top it's of it. It's like that. right over top of it. So that's, that's a small problem because our steering box is in our exhaust. So. I don't know what we're gonna just, do there. Just dent the exhaust to make it work. No. So we may have to take this steering box, and one thing is I have this box that's actually right behind Mike. Um, oh, that box. I was gonna use this for the Sweetheart Roadster, but it's not channel, but this is an old um, Gemmer boat steering box I got at Hershey years ago. Anybody that's been watching the channel for a while may remember this. This, these uh, old boat steering boxes have an adjustable mount that mounts to the top or the bottom of the frame. And they steer, the way they steer, the arm would end up being straight up in the, in the air, which is good for when you have a car that's lowered quite a bit. But the nice thing is we could turn this bracket, use a steering box like this, and mount it under the frame to get the steering box low enough so we could run pipes in there. And we'll also get the, you know, it out of the way completely and get it mounted underneath and then it probably would jive okay. So I'm sort of thinking about running that. Um, it would work out really, really well. Even though I like this trick setup they did with running the engine setup I'm running, it, it would be a problem. Um, I really, the other big thing is I wanna keep the engine sitting like as low as possible. I, I'm not super into the rat fink like blower It's actually not that bad. No, this is perfect. Uh, this is what I want. I like where like the carbs are up above the cow like that, that's, that's cool. But I don't like when, personally for the type of cars I like to build. I don't like, I don't want like a blower on my carbs. I don't want my carbs to end up above my roof. Come on. It, it, I'm not into the rat thing thing. It's cool in drawings, but, and it's cool in some of the real wild gassers, but for what this car's supposed to be, I don't really want that. So having just the carbs kind of stick above, I think is really cool and uh, it, it works out. But the, the size of these heads actually works really well with a 34. Like if you look, Arden heads when they're put on flatheads on like a Model T or something like that, they end up sticking well, even out. even a 32, they stick out past the yeah, hood sides. Yeah, they, they kind of stick out quite a bit. And with this thing, you can see it, I mean, just the front nose does a little bit, but I'm probably not gonna run a hood on this because why would I ever wanna cover this madness up? It's awesome. So, uh, also, other thing we did is, I got these at a swap meet in Ohio with a chrome front axle I got, and I was staring at the car and saw the bolt configuration, and sure enough, there, there it is. So. Uh, it's like it's meant to be, that's why we gather all these parts. Um, so other thing is we threw the 39 trans in, and 
I put a shifter in that we had laying around. It's actually pretty darn close. Oh, that's the one we got in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. It's like super close to fitting. I think it just needs a slight little bit of bending, but I really like it. We wired the, the uh, steering column with the 40 wheel up. The one thing I noticed it on staring at this car since we did the last video, they actually narrowed the dash here and also here. So the opening for the 40 Ford gauge panel is smaller as well as the opening for the speaker. Huh. So I can't just run a stock 40 Ford gauge panel. I'm probably gonna have to just make a panel, put some store water gauges in here, same in there, and it'll probably work out pretty nice. But originally I was like, oh, I'll run a, like a truck uh, gauge panel in here, uh, or 40 or 41. The 42 gauge uh, setup that fits in here, the truck one I really like, but that won't work because this is too small. So a couple of things I got to figure out, but that's the fun part of this is just gathering the parts, getting them together. I have a ton of stuff I need to figure out on it. Um, but yeah, so that was really awesome. A lot of fun. Most you have opening, open space on the shelf. That means I know, you I gotta buy more space. stuff. No, no. Yes. I could probably pick stuff that's on the floor up on the <laughs> shelf. But yeah, so the big thing I'm trying to figure out is wheel tire combination. I actually have the back end kind of jacked up a little bit. I want this thing to have look fast sitting still. So I want a pretty, pretty good rake on the car. So I have the back end jacked up a little bit, but I also have a set of 18 inch, the same place I found the Ardens and the blower uh, at that estate, craziest estate auction ever. I found a set of 18 inch Halibrand magnesium indie wheels and i have a set of the like half tread indie tires that coker reproduced for a while i don't know if they're even doing them anymore um, i test fit them up it's going to make the car sit pretty high but i need to throw uh, i need to put some air in them and uh, and really test fit them they're obviously center locks so i'd have to get adapters maybe which is going to cost some some money and i want to make sure I'm, I'm definitely like them so we'll drop a picture in, in the video here but i test fit them up I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with them i'm not sure yet so i need to kind of look at some old photos and see what guys are doing and see how i'm going to do it but it's a big tire so uh, you've got to get the stance nailed just right and get the front wheel and tire combination just right so but that's the fun of this so that is the uh our best sunday service yet i think that was the most fun i've ever had doing this because it was just fun mock-up work, but kind of cool. Better than sitting on the shelf. At least now it's in the car that it's going to go in, and I can start kind of like moving things around and kind of eyeballing stuff as I'm working on the projects. This is a nice thing to do to kind of like stress relief when you're working on something that's very difficult or time-consuming. You can jump over to this and just kind of tinker uh, until we're ready to like jump on it full bore. So thank you guys for uh, watching this. I'm super psyched. This is this is it for me. So. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a couple of nights in here just staring at it. So <laughs> thanks guys, appreciate it. Catch you later.